Hey folks, this is IOE Star and we're back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Rumpelvorskin. He is in his um, 121. I don't know what I was going to say, but it wasn't 121. <laughs> uh, um, this is a tank I'm actually looking forward to getting my hands on. I don't know when that will be, though. Um, it's a tier 10 game on Corellia, and it's not an encounter or a assault or whatever, so this should be actually pretty fun. Um, before we get into the game, though, I do want to talk to you guys about some stuff. So, I've been mushing it over in my head for a while, um, but the, the Patreon account, which is supposed to be the way that you guys support this channel, uh, if, if you like the fact that it's ad-free uh, and you want to support the content, uh, it, it's it's just not going anywhere. And, and so I started thinking about it and realized that I could actually probably do stuff like book reviews, and if you guys like them, then uh, if you click on the link and buy it that way then I make a little bit of money and you guys find some awesome books and um, I can't help it but obviously the books I'm going to be reviewing is going to be about tanks because I don't know about you guys but I play this game because I like old tanks um, and so I'm going to get into that I'm thinking about doing like one a month and so I could use your input if you got ideas or you think there's a horrible idea or it's a great idea or whatever in between or you just got other things you want me to review then um you know post a comment and we'll, we'll talk about that but for right now we're into the action as he's finally found this holy smokes what an opening shot and is he gonna burn to death nobody's gonna burn enough that he's gonna gourd okay one shot, 982 damage. Sounds legit. <laughs> right? <laughs> I always forget this thing does 500 damage per shell. I'm, I'm always thinking it's like a, a 420 kind of shell. No, it's a 440. Okay. So we high rolled for 500 damage, and then it burned for another <laughs> 400 and some <laughs> Wow, the high rolls are real right now. Oop. Unfortunately, the Skoda is also noticing how to fire, and uh, it's ooh, auto aim, shutting him down right there. If he had aimed himself, he may have been able to get the tail shot um, and like track the Skoda kind of thing as it went into cover. But the auto aim meant that uh, that didn't happen. Now I understand the auto aim is because he was concentrating on driving and getting himself behind cover. Um, but it's just one of those things where there's such a trade-off and uh, when you're just simply reversing you don't really need to auto aim though I understand why people do nice shot aiming for the track of that T32 I don't know if he connected with the drive wheel he did damage the track but I don't think he like I know he didn't mobilize it so I don't think he connected with the drive wheel and so now um, Oh, I mean, you know, if you're just going to sit in the open, then we're going to shoot, right? I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> going to be any of this, like, letting you get away with this garbage. It's just silly. Uh, unfortunately, though, he can't see... I was going to say he can't see the T-32 anymore. Nobody can see the T-32 anymore now, though. Uh, the lightweight is in the ditch, so he's not going to get another shot on him. The Pantera has figured out that sitting in the open is a death sentence, so apparently we're not going to get any more shots on him. And the Skoda is going to keep hiding because it doesn't want to die. <laughs> so pushing over this ridge, he's got the side of that E75. Can he get a shot before it realizes he's here? Yes, however, we only track it. So now it's going to be a little bit awkward because... There's no way he's not. Yeah, he is looking this way. Unfortunately for him, his turret isn't turning fast enough to get his gun over here with time. Or he wasn't really thinking that we'd pop back up just now. And so he wasn't looking right at us. And, uh, and <laughs> Rumpel gets to great drop a nice shell into him. Dip, dip, dip. If I could talk English, this would help this commentary so much better. Um... Uh, okay, that poor E75 obviously tracked in the open. No way to do anything about it. Chose to pay attention to somebody else, and we chose to shoot him in the side. And the Impanzer is going to go down much the same way. There's very little he can do about it. 
because he's sitting in the spot where he's effectively in the middle of a crossfire, um, there's nothing he can do about it. Ooh. Okay, so we just got shot in the back. I don't, I don't see the mark unless it's right there. Um, where we got shot in the mark? Shot in the back. But apparently that <laughs> lightweight can see us. So he's pushing forward. He wants to spot the lightweight. I don't think he's going to. Um, the Skoda may have moved up. We might be able to spot him. But the lightweight should, I mean, assuming he's not firing from the open, should be completely invisible until we're like literally on top of it and then we'll proxy spot it. And that's probably the only way you're going to see the lightweight. Assuming it doesn't make some crazy rush while firing across the board. Because that would be the other way we'd spot it. That thing is stealthy enough and small enough that it can do pretty much whatever it wants to as long as there's a bush around. Um, and there's not much you can do about it. Ooh, Skoda though. Looks like we proxy spot it. No? Maybe. We might have proxy spot him. If we were lit already, we wouldn't have got the sixth sense marker going off. Uh, which is quite possibly what happened. And now we're pulling away. And I'm almost surprised we're not getting shot by the uh, T-100. Either he can't shoot at us right now um, because he can't see us or because he doesn't want to take the risk of us seeing him. And that would mean he's a lot closer than what he looks like on the map. Because on the map, he's more than likely he's far enough away that he can shoot at us and be okay. I mean, not now, but when we're halfway up that hill, definitely. And so I think the uh, the T-100 might be more towards the middle of the map. Okay, so pushing down, he wants to catch up with the Skoda's. I mean, if Skoda's running away, then that's a great time to attack him because he's obviously not going to be facing you. Um, there's the added benefit of it. In his head, he's already lost the fight when you're running. I mean, when somebody's running, oh, look, see, not in the middle of the map, but not in the bush that we thought he was in either. Um, so that's quite possibly why he couldn't shoot as he wasn't in position to be able to do so. Oh, unfortunately, a hit from both or all sides now, I guess, or rather just two. Um, being in a crossfire is bad, and unfortunately, being in a crossfire with an auto loader and something else is really bad. But the Skoda still goes down because of actually a really great snipe from our ST1 over there. So now, um, we're, we're apparently going to watch the action. Whoop. Uh, this is why I don't do death camps, guys. Um, watching the action from somebody's point of view. Oh, I saw a tree fall right there. That means all three of them are right here. Um, and our team is just going to close in. Um, I kind of wonder. Uh, he's still thinking the LT100 is up here. Uh, but it's not. It's very definitely over here. Um, all three of them are in this location. Or they were a second ago. The LT100 can still move back up and around. Or it can go for the zippy play and come down here. Uh, if it's if our scorpion spots something, it'll be right about nowish. Uh, okay, so th th that's those two. All right, open fire on things, which means things are going to be able to open fire back on them. The badger is going to be tough to kill. The can pans are not so much. Let's see, <laughs> um, so we're just looking for the shot from the scorpion to to oh, wait. The scorpion will seal the th the fate of the badger. T100 is is up there. The badger seals the fate of the ST1, and the scorpion will seal the fate of the badger. Aha! Look at that. So Chuck Norris took down the LT100. That's about right. Chuck Norris is probably needed to take down LT100. Master badge second class. I'm gonna assume that's because we we died and uh, it would have been a first class otherwise. Uh, Bruiser, Fire for Effect, the High Caliber, and the Tank Sniper Awards. Uh, it was well done. I still, I can't believe the first shot of the game is 982 damage. <laughs> uh, 
just the way that worked out is so unfortunate and so funny. Um, well done, sir. Badger's top of the enemy team, and we're top of our team. Uh, and from there, it just like <laughs> horribly falls off. That ST one though deserves props. He he uh, carried the game. Without him and and Rumpel, this game would have gone so much worse in such a horribly different way. Um, actually, the two of them ending up pretty similar on experience, with the bat or the ST one probably finding more of his targets himself and spawning them at himself, and that's the higher experience. Um, and overall, still making money off this game, which is actually very impressive, because even without the extra action uh, reserves or whatever this this was, um, he still would have made money on this game, and actually a substantial amount for a, a tier 10 game. Uh, so well done, sir. Thank you so much for sending this in. Next time, if everybody could please try not to die, I would appreciate that more. But other than that, this was a great game. And guys, let me know about the, the books idea. If you guys like the idea of me reviewing books, then um, yeah, leave a comment. I want to know what you guys think. This a whole channel is about what you guys think. So yeah, thank you all. Have a great night. This IOE.